When I would ask questions out of genuine curiosity, they would, they would answer honestly, but you could tell there was something, there was a reservedness to those answers. There was pain that was there, something there. Uh, as a fourth generation immigrant to the United States, uh, I am a, a descendant of a survivor. My great grandmother's name was Varter Bogosian. She was a survivor from Karpert. She was one of three who survived the genocide. Uh, she ended up losing her little brother after being housed in a soldier's home. Uh, she ended up getting smuggled out of the uh, Ottoman Empire through an Armenian smugglers network. She uh, settled in Marseille, worked for seven years, and eventually was found by her family. Her brother found her on a list of uh, names of survivors in our home in the United States. He turns to his best friend Sarkis, says, she's there, she lived, go get her, go marry her, bring her back. And lo and behold, she did. Uh, she came to the United States with Sarkis, they were married, and the rest is history. My grandmother was born one month after uh, her mom's arrival in the United States. They settled in central Massachusetts, not too far from Boston, and almost, almost 100 odd years later, here I am. Here at the Armenian Genocide Museum Institute, I work as a research editor and a copy editor. However, beyond those jobs, I also work as a researcher, given that I also am pursuing my PhD in political science and genocide studies. It's a very personal connection here. Because for my family, much the same as for myself, there is a personal element attached to it. Because my, uh, my mom, my aunt, and their cousin, they grew up with their grandparents being first generation survivors. That trauma was something that was almost inherited directly. It was something that was very difficult to talk about. And when I would ask questions out of genuine curiosity, they would, they would answer honestly, but you could tell there was something, there was a reservedness to the, those answers. There was pain that was there, something there. There's lots of reasons why you can say, why did you come to Armenia? For many reasons, of course. But that personal connection to the Institute, to Varter's story, to the folks I've gotten to know and become close with here at the Institute, that experience is special. To be here and to continue being able to do this work, to create connections with folks who do this for a living and to carry on the legacy of almost doing your part to telling your family's story and to stay connected with that past heritage. That's special. It's really special. A large part of what motivated me to come to Armenia was the opportunity to be here at the Genocide Memorial. Beyond all the benefits of working with such talented researchers and volunteers who are here, who dedicate their life to studying uh, something that's so indispensable, there was something personal deep down that, dr that drove me here. Um, I applied for Birthright hoping, almost pleading with the hope to actually be here at the Institute to be able to do this work and to follow up on my family legacy. The genocide is a part of our personal family history, but to be here during the month of April and on the 24th, it gives an extra sense of purpose. On each year, people stream from Kenthron up the hill up to Sitsunaka Bear to pay their respects. Having seen it uh, from home, it's always been a dream to actually be part of that movement uh, one year. While here for the special day itself, there's something really, really significant to be able to make that claim of being here on the Day of Remembrance while being a part of the museum's workforce and structure. Uh, it feels particularly special in, in relation to honoring my family's legacy and to continue that work, which is commemorated on such a special day.